Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to discuss the concepts of MTU, IPMTU and TCPMSS and discuss the key differences and why you might want to adjust them. It seems this is one of those topics which causes a lot of confusion, so let's get to it. So the Ethernet MTU is at layer 2 and it's the maximum Ethernet payload size a device can send or receive on a layer 2 or layer 3 interface. It does not include the layer 2 header and trailer. In this case, the Ethernet MTU would consist of the IP header, the TCP header and the IP data. But as we know, Ethernet can contain many different protocols. It does not necessarily have to be TCP or even IP. It could be UDP or FCOE, for example. The default MTU on devices and indeed the internet is 1500 bytes and most of the time you would never need to change this value. There are however some situations where it is beneficial which we will discuss later. MTU is checked on both ingress and egress interfaces and if the ethernet MTU is exceeded the frame will be dropped. Layer 2 doesn't have any fragmentation capabilities as it doesn't contain any fragment field in the header like an IP header does. It's also worth mentioning the minimum size of an Ethernet frame is 64 bytes and this includes the Ethernet header and trailer. A frame will also be automatically padded out if it is smaller than 64 bytes to make up the difference before transmission. The MTU can be changed if required to account for larger payloads. If it's increased up to 9000 or 9216 bytes this value is dependent on the hardware platform, it's considered to be a jumbo frame. If it's increased up to 1600 bytes, it's considered to be a baby giant. There are both pros and cons for changing to a larger MTU value. Having a network with a larger MTU obviously increases network efficiency because at the end of the day, you're sending less headers, so you are wasting less bytes on the wire for headers and ultimately having higher throughput for data. If you think of it like a delivery company, it's like sending a large pallet full of stuff rather than many smaller items with separate deliveries. There are some downsides though. You could experience increased network delay due to packets taking longer to send. And if you are suffering from packet loss, retransmissions take longer to send and cause more impact than smaller packets due to them simply holding more data. If you choose a smaller MTU, you are less efficient but you have a shorter network delay and when there is packet loss it becomes less of an issue as you are having to retransmit less data. Different applications perform better with different size MTUs. Storage over iSCSI is ideally suited to the larger MTU, for example. Real-time applications prefer the smaller MTU. When you do increase the MTU, you should also configure it on every interface of the network where a larger MTU is required to prevent MTU mismatches and bottlenecks. NICs, switches, routers and firewalls all need to account for it. While the IP MTU is related to the Ethernet MTU, they are slightly different. It runs at layer 3 as opposed to layer 2 and uses the same default 1500 byte sizing, but unlike Ethernet, it includes the headers. It refers to the maximum IP packet size before fragmentation occurs. IP fragmentation is the process of breaking packets into smaller pieces known as fragments, so they pass through a link with a smaller MTU. The IP MTU cannot be bigger than the Ethernet MTU, otherwise it will be fragmented. In fact, platforms like Cisco don't even allow you to configure a larger IP MTU than an Ethernet MTU. If you increase the Ethernet MTU on most platforms, the IP MTU is automatically adjusted so they match, but you're actually permitted to set a lower IP MTU if you wish. Basically most of the time they should be the same, but the rule is that the IP MTU should be less than or equal to the Ethernet MTU, but not greater. It's also worth noting that IP MTU only applies to layer 3 interfaces and not layer 2 interfaces like trunk and access ports. When first learning these two concepts, it can sometimes be difficult to work out the main differences, seeing as both by default are 1500 bytes and look quite similar. 
the Ethernet MTU should be seen essentially like a container for the IP MTU. The IP MTU is for the IP packet specifically and having the ability to change it independently of the Ethernet MTU just gives us more granular control. If we look at the diagram below, you could have Ethernet MTU using jumbo frames of 9000 bytes and an IP MTU of 1500 bytes. Anything which is not IP being encapsulated within Ethernet could still make use of that 9000 bytes, but IP would not. When the Ethernet MTU is exceeded purely at layer 2, it's going to be dropped, for example on a switch trunk interface. When an IP MTU is exceeded at layer 3, it is fragmented and again in the diagram, if the IP packet exceeded 1500 bytes, it would still need to be fragmented despite the fact we have an Ethernet MTU of 9000 to play with, because it's still an independent value. They should typically be exactly the same value unless required to change to account for additional headers within tunneling technologies for example. So if we take GRE as an example, and we are using the default MTU values of 1500 bytes, fragmentation would be needed because when we add the 4 byte GRE header and an additional 20 byte IP header, the overall payload ends up being 1524 bytes, which would exceed 1500 bytes and therefore be fragmented. So the way to optimize the network in this case would be to reduce the IP MTU by 24 bytes to account for the additional GRE and IP headers. This will ensure the 1500 byte MTU is not exceeded and ultimately prevents fragmentation and in turn prevents the reduction in network performance. So TCP MSS is dealt with at layer 4 specifically for TCP and mainly used between end hosts as routers route layer 3 and do not care about layer 4 unless the traffic is destined to the router itself. It determines the maximum amount of data in a single TCP segment. This is in bytes and it basically refers to the maximum TCP payload size. The IP and TCP header is not included in this. It is just the payload as shown in the diagram. The MSS is specified within the options field of the TCP header and is sent during the SYN and SYN act. If it isn't sent, the other side will assume a safe value of 536 bytes. When a host sends an MSS value, it's essentially forming the other side not to send a TCP payload size any larger than that. For example, if host A sends a TCP SYN with the TCP option set at 1460 bytes to host B, that is telling host B not to send a TCP payload higher than 1460. MSS works in conjunction with MTU in that if the MSS is too large, packets could end up larger than the Ethernet MTU and require fragmentation. 1460 is the most common size as it takes into consideration the 20 bytes for the TCP header and 20 bytes for the IP header adding up to 1500 bytes. But sometimes the IP and TCP headers could actually be larger than 20 bytes if more options are added. So in this case the sender will reduce the MSS to avoid fragmentation. It would reduce the size by an equal amount of bytes that were taken up by the additional headers. This is often done dynamically with path MTU discovery. Hosts can lower the MSS with path MTU discovery using ICMP. If ICMP is blocked by firewalls etc, routers along the path can instead be configured to perform TCP MSS adjust and this would modify the TCP SYN messages of higher MSS values down to the configured adjusted value and is done without the sender knowing as it traverses the router's interface. If GRE was used as an example, we would set a TCP MSS adjust of 1436 bytes to account for the 24 bytes of additional space taken up. If we continue sending with 1460, by the time we have added 40 bytes of headers, that would exceed 1476 bytes of the IP MTU which we should have already configured on the router. So I'm going to leave the video there. I know there's quite a lot more to go into on these topics, but hopefully this was enough to help understand the key concepts.
Thanks for watching guys. I hope this was informative and I'll see you in the next one.